it is. Good day. Happy New Year, as you're probably listening to this still somewhat early in January of 2022. I keep saying it out loud because I need to make my brain believe it. <laughs> so every opportunity that I get, I'm going to say 2022. Welcome to another episode of the Coffee with Coaches podcast. I am your host, Kevin Stafford. And today I have with me Terry Bean. And Terry has, he gave me a great bio to read. So I'm just going to go ahead and read it straight out. If you ask 10 people, what does Terry Bean do? You'll get 10 smiles and nine different answers. Ultimately, Terry Bean is a keynote speaker, a business coach, a connector, and a fun guy to know. So without further ado, Terry, welcome to the podcast. <laughs> wow, now I got to live up to being fun. Holy cow, I didn't even think about that when I said that. Dang it. All right. Based we'll on our conversation back. before I hit record, this is not going to be a problem for you at all. <laughs> I'll live up to it. I'll do my best. How you doing, Kevin? And happy new year. Aren't you glad you don't have to write years on checks anymore? I was, that? Just, I was just making that like the like one of the ultimate dad jokes is like, who writes checks anymore? <laughs> I've made that joke probably four times already this year, which is probably <laughs> three times too many but you know whatever it gets a laugh i don't mind yeah, laughing at me i don't care <laughs> we're not sure it was funny the first time but you know keep going to the well different audience maybe. just keep going to the well <laughs> let's let's begin at the beginning very apropos considering we're in the new year what's your origin story what got you started in coaching wow you know i had a i had a level of expertise in the field of business networking and people started asking me enough questions about that. And when social media came on the, on the scene, I was already really steeped in that. And so between the running face-to-face -face networking groups and events and doing the social media, it became a real natural transition to help people get better at that. And candidly, back in 2008, 2007, when I started, I was really over the term consultant. Mm -hmm. And even though, you know, I believe that a good coach pulls information out of you and a good consultant pushes information into you. So that's my, that was my distinction. I tend to play in both spaces. I actually referred to myself as a coach consultant for a long time <laughs> because you need both skills, right? Yeah. And so, but that was it, man. It was, it was having a level of expertise and a, a medium by which to share it. I love that. Very clean explanation. And I really do love that distinction because a lot of times people, even nowadays as coaching has really elevated in people's awareness, they have, you know, they have maybe not difficulty, but they wrestle with, okay, what's the definition of a coach versus a consultant or even versus something like a therapist or a psychologist, something like that, where it's just, it's, it's this self-work. And like you were saying, it's like, there's definitely an input output balance that's different for each role. And I love the, I mean, it's, it's, I love, I love a good portmanteau, of course, the combination of two words. So coach Sultan, that kind of tickles my, tickles my, my funny bone a little bit, but I love it. It really does get at the fact that you really do have to have a, a sort of multidisciplinary approach to really be a truly effective coach and to get, to put people in the positions that they want to be in. You know, that's and that's true, not only for the different people that we work with or the different companies, but even in the same meeting, I find myself switching hats mm. because there are there's there's behavior gaps and there's knowledge gaps you know in 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 either scenario it being the coach might help you illuminate or see it more clearly but being the consultant that's going to say no this is where the rubber meets the road dude and in really giving it to them as opposed to extracting it from them from them yeah you really do need to have yeah, and like you said, sometimes in the same meeting, sometimes in the same conversation interaction, you really do need to be able to have that ability to go to basically, yeah, to, to shift from input to output and back. Just because, you know, at different moments, especially when someone's having, I mean, I know I, I, it's just kind of a big word, epiphany. You know, because when someone's having one of those like epiphany-like moments or something's dawning on them, I always love that phrase, dawning on them, like a light coming up over the horizon. That's a very dynamic, tricky moment. That often requires it, and it often feels it doesn't really require a whole lot necessarily consciously, but there's just there's a lot ex exchanging hands going back and forth between the person experiencing the epiphany and or the dawning and the person who's maybe not provoking it, but who's present and participating in that moment. And it's just it's lovely. It's it's one thing that I've found to be fairly common in almost every coach I talk to, where they they acknowledge and respect that need to be able to to shift hats sometimes on the fly, which can be really scary sometimes. It's why I feel like coaching is such a valuable role 
has been for years and is just going to become more valuable as we're going forward because you need people who are able to do that that quick hat switching in moments to really be able to move with the the coachee, the receiver of the coaching. So basically to get where they want to go, to get where they're looking to go. And I love that that role of guide is so perfect for a coach. Yeah, I'm smiling because I, I'm doing an event tomorrow and the, the organizer said, you have a laptop you can bring. And so I had to dust off my old laptop. So I'm using the one I use. And the password on that laptop is guide. That's, that's perfect. <laughs> it's what you do, right? It's what you if do, you're, yeah. If you're doing it right, I'm just a Sherpa trying to get you up a mountain, man. That's it. Sherpa is another one I come across quite a bit. It's, 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 a perfect, it's a perfect metaphor for what so many coaches do, getting you up that mountain safely. <laughs> and with the with the path of least resistance, whatever whatever that may actually be. Yeah, that, that definition is a moving target for for different people. I think. Let's let's talk about. I could talk about coaching concepts with you all day. Let's talk about your business in specific. And I'll throw a word out there, and this is another one you can interpret as you will. What would you say that you're doing right now in your coaching business that is unique, or that separates you, or somehow differentiates you from other coaches in the field? Not necessarily in like a higher or lower way, but just what would you say that you're most you find to be the most unique or special about your coaching approach and your practice? My wife, when I work from home, ends up hearing some of my conversations. And so I'm <laughs> going to kick it back to a word you used earlier. She refers to me as a business therapist all hmm. the time. She's like, it's crazy to me, the conversations you have with people. And obviously she can only hear one side of it, but the way I'm asking questions and the, in the, just the depth of it, is is something that I think is really, really important. And the reality is when you're in the executive coaching space like I play in, they don't have anybody else to talk to, to be open with, right? So it's almost like you're just, a, you're an outlet for them. So they're not carrying whatever garbage around they have. You know, I'm like, here, give it to me, dude. Dump it on me, I'll take it. Cause I know I can set it down. I don't have to carry it. Mm -hmm. I just got to take it from you. So you're not carrying it around. So that's one really interesting element in the space that I play in. Again, I alluded to was the networking world. Yes. So it puts me in a little different position. I, I got the, I got the insight into the networking space back in the mid nineties. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing this for a long time at this point in helping people build those strategic partnerships, build the relationships they need, figure out how to use social media more effectively as a networking tool, as opposed to just a promotion tool. Those things, I think, yeah, you'll know better than, than I do, Kevin. You talk to more coaches than I do, but those things make me a little bit unique. I would, I would say so. I, I like your, your uniqueness comes from your emphasis, because obviously there's a pretty, a pretty common skill set for a lot of coaches. And there's a lot of the same kinds of reasons. People come from similar backgrounds, but still different. They come with, an, with, a, with, with a similar sort of identity and a, a, an idea of how to, how to make connections, how to grow yourself, your team, your company, your business, how to, basically just how to grow. And then just different approaches that they all have like certain similarities there's always a desire to serve someone like I, I can, and I can see this in you as well. It's like, you have this, this wealth of experience that you've been building up for decades and decades. And you're just like, it's, I have, I have really powerful ways to help people. And so I just want to do that. I want to find newer and better ways to just to do that, to kind of share that wealth of knowledge and wealth of experience that you have. And I can see that I imagine in your experiences with executives, especially like, I like how you talked about how mostly they just need some place to lay down their burdens or occasionally dump their trash because <laughs> there's a lot there's a lot on especially those higher c-suite level executives where it's just like they don't really have anybody that they can they can be vulnerable in the presence of who also would understand what they're going through that's a tricky combo to someone who actually like they're not just dumping it on you know a tape recording or some like nameless faceless you know whatever it happens to be it's someone that they they trust to carry that and they also trust that that will be understood and I feel like that's, that's extremely powerful. Well, and that's why empathy is so important in the world of coaching, right? You, you have to be able to put yourself in their shoes. You know, I, I, remember, I remember when I had a coach years ago, he said something that stuck with me forever. He said, if you spot it, you got it. And the reality is the people that we end up coaching are pretty much on a similar path, maybe just a step or six behind, Yeah. right? So you can easily turn around, shine the spotlight and say, don't step there, you're gonna fall in a hole. 
you're going to want to go over there, right? And that's kind of what, what, in my mind, what a good coach does is it illuminates the path to where you want to go. And the steps will be different, but you'll just make sure they don't step on any of those dangerous places. That's right. Landmine, <laughs> look out. <laughs> Landmines. <laughs> I have so many things I would love to talk to you about, but I want to, I want to give you a chance to specifically talk about, given that we're in the new year, what's coming next for you and your coaching business? What's the, what's the next thing that you're looking to focus on or are currently focusing on in a major way? What's on the horizon and also like where people can find out more about you? Because I don't want to I don't want to let the conversation end before they can, they know which social media platforms to find you on and which website to go to. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So as we speak, I'm building out a how to be a thought leader course, okay. right? So in January, I'm launching this as a live course. And then, I, you know, you got to run through it once at least to make sure that it's got the right stuff. Yeah. And then in by May, clasp hands, by <laughs> May, I will be uh, launching as an online course. So I'm going to run through this 10 weeks, figure out where the where the gold is and where the trash is, and <laughs> you know, make more of the same or less of the same, depending. So that's what's that's what's really on my radar. I mentioned a presentation tomorrow, and yeah. so I'm actually going to do a quick vignette of that course tomorrow morning. So I'm excited to see how that's received. I'll, I'll know whether or not I have a winner or a dud in, you know, about 20 hours. So Oof, that's exciting, but scary a little bit too. <laughs> it's maybe, maybe, you know, it's, if, if that were the only eggs or the only basket I had, that would be totally scary. So <laughs> it's, yeah, I'm, I'm not super relying on it, but I love the idea and frankly, I've been threatening to build an online course since <laughs> like the dawn of online coursing. So <laughs> this is this could be a really good time. I love that being on the on the cusp of discovery is such an energizing place to be. And it's it's I, I find often um, when it, in my own life and in talking to coaches that fear and excitement are almost the exact same state, usually just a matter of interpretation. That's right. And That's so it's, exactly. it's you're on the cusp of. I think an exciting discovery. It sounds like. I mean, just just talking with you in these last few minutes, I'm just, I'm I'm looking forward to how this develops and looking forward to what come what comes around in May. And I, I do like the fact that you're approaching it almost like a comedian approaches their their set, where it's like you don't just go up on stage and be pristinely perfectly funny with people falling down laughing. I mean, every once in a while that happens, but there's a lot of work that goes on to make it look effortless. <laughs> that's the goal, right? Yeah. Make it look easy, man. And, and, and that's such an important element because that builds the trust that people need to have in you, right? That builds mm -hmm. the confidence that they need to have in you. So yeah, you got to look like I've done this a hundred times before, you know, <laughs> and it's, and if I'm being totally honest, Kevin, a lot of the material in this course is just repackaged material from other things I've done. Yeah. Right. The elements of being a good thought leader are very similar to the elements of being a good marketer, mm -hmm. to being a good networker, right, to, to being somebody that's a good promoter. So it's, it's really about the messaging, the delivery, who you're actually targeting and talking to. Mm -hmm. Right. And then there's a whole piece on it about being able to stand up and, and talk about whatever it is your area of expertise is and sounding like a credible pro. Where can people find out more about all this? <laughs> let's let's so, let's give people somewhere to go because I'm if anybody who's listening is like me, they're 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 excited by this, they're interested in this, and they, yeah, they're they're definitely vibe and picking up what you're putting down. So yeah, where's where's the best place to find out more about you and this course that's coming up? Perfect, perfect. So I'm really in the middle of redoing my website, so I know by the time this hits, it'll probably be down because that's how the universe works sometimes. Of course. But <laughs> my my website is trybean.com, t r y b e a n.com. I thought I was very clever at 25 when I picked my Hotmail address because <laughs> there was already a Terry Bean at Hotmail, so I was like. Ooh, watch me drop these two letters out of my name. And, th <laughs> and then my smart friends are like, why would they want to try you when they want to get you or hire you or anything else? I'm like, yeah, but those words aren't in my name, dude. Settle down. It's try being. 
Take it easy. <laughs> Trybean.com. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> as far as where I spend the most time socially, I'm really active on LinkedIn. I'm mm-hmm. on there multiple times a day and I'm LinkedIn.com slash in slash Terry Bean. So you can tell I got there early. <laughs> most everywhere else, whether it's Facebook, well, Facebook, Instagram slash try being T R Y B E A N. Okay. And although I have Terry being on Facebook too, but that's my personal stuff and y'all ain't invited to that yet. <laughs> and then I've got a YouTube channel at try being way. And I guess Twitter's Terry Bean, but Twitter is basically anything that goes through LinkedIn just filters to Twitter at this yeah. point. And Twitter's Twitter's Twitter could be a very hit or miss place. I'd some days I love it. Some days I, some days I don't love it. I'll put yes. it that way. <laughs> I, I'm with you. I, I stopped scrolling Twitter as a as a regular activity about five years ago, which means now I'm a lousy Twitter user because I'm not engaging. I'm just promoting there. Yeah, um, but you're probably but happier. That's, that's, <laughs> that's day to day. Okay. Yeah, that's I think it's okay. okay. <laughs> it's all good. Well, Terry, this has been fantastic. I've gone so far over the amount of time we usually. I try to keep these to ten minutes, as all, all listeners know. You're just too dang interesting and engaging. So please forgive me. And also, I'm not sorry. <laughs> yeah, dude, uh, put a mic in my in front of my mouth, and yeah, yeah good luck getting that out of my hands. <laughs> so I so, appreciate this, and not worried about the time at all. So thank you for sharing yours with me, and thanks to the listeners for actually listening. I appreciate you all too. Couldn't have said it better myself. Gratitude all around, and we'll talk to you soon.